So, um, last time we saw that uh, the theory says that uh, we should adjust power at an instant t to be equal to the target um, uh, signal to interference ratio versus uh, actual signal to interference ratio times pi that was used in the previous cycle of uh, a few milliseconds. Uh, and the question was, uh, how do we determine gamma and how do we determine signal to interference ratio? Well, actually, it turns out that you don't have to uh, estimate either of the two because uh, you can actually use uh, instead a proxy that says uh, power at instant t should be equal target error rate divided by uh, actual error rate times the power of i transmitter at instant t minus 1. So, as I might have mentioned, uh, the tra and no transmission is error free. Even when you play a CD player, a CD on a CD player, Every now and then you have like either very small scratches or particles of dust that cause uh, neighboring bits uh, to be um, read incorrectly, right? Uh, and also in the wireless telecommunications you can have a strike of uh, lightning or you can have uh, uh, noise from spark plugs that cause a few symbols uh, to be uh, read incorrectly. So the uh, uh, next thing that we are going to see is the error correction codes which allow with minimal um, overhead uh, to allow relatively large number of errors uh, and uh, despite the errors uh, uh, the whole message will be perfectly decoded. Now, the error correction produces the error-free output, but it also produces, uh, uh, it tells you how many errors uh, it had to correct, right? So it tells you uh, this. The target error rate is below the maximal error rate that uh, your system can correct. For example, if uh, maximal error, uh, number of errors that can be corrected in a message of 256, uh, of line 260, 256, is say 28, uh, uh, you might try to maintain the number of errors to say to about 14, so that even if uh, the error rate uh, increases somewhat, uh, um, it can still be correctly decoded, but on the other hand, you do allow a significant number of uh, errors, uh, um, which means uh, that uh, you can operate very close to, re reasonably close to, infor to the information theoretic limit of your uh, channel. So what are the errors due? Errors are due to noise, right? Um, so the transmitter uh, has a finite uh, alphabet of waveforms, and then um, and you can say represent them uh, as points uh, uh, in the plane uh, that can be either kind of squarish or circular uh, configuration, and then. Uh, you see the, uh, the, the distance between two adjacent points uh, is chosen so that most likely 
your uh, received symbol will be in this neighborhood of the correct symbol, right? But uh, every now and then there will be more noise, and this is pretty tight, right? You, uh, 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 if uh, if this is the RMS value of the noise, I mean, if uh, this might be say twice the RMS value of the noise, right? So that uh, you are most likely to be here, but. Uh, uh, of course, when it comes to stochastic processes, sometimes uh, the symbol received can enter the neighborhood. It can be so distorted that it actually looks more like this symbol, right? So errors are in inevitable, and um, for that reason, we have the error correction codes. Uh, and this actually tells you uh, how, in practice, the power is controlled, just uh, trying to maintain, chasing the target error rate that is neither too big nor too small, right? Because you want uh, these points to be reasonably densely spaced uh, to increase the capacity of your channel. <coughs> so what is the trick of error correction codes? Well, the fundamental idea is actually remarkably simple. Right, <coughs> idea is, uh, say you want to uh, transport uh, 10 symbols. Uh, think of them as 10 real numbers. Of course, this is not what is done in the practice. We will see what is done in the practice. But to explain the basics, assume you want to transport 10, uh, say, either integers or real numbers say 10 integers, instead of transporting these integers, say p1 up to b10, you do the following trick. Uh, you form a polynomial p of x such that, say, p of 1 is equal to b1, uh, p of 2 is, uh, sorry, 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 what am I saying? No. You form the following polynomial, uh, p of x is equal to b1 plus b2x plus plus b10 uh, x to the 9, right? We start from 1 to 10. And now, instead of transporting b1 up to b10, you transport uh, the values p of 1, p of 2, all the way up to p of 10, p of 11, and p of 12. So instead of sending 10 uh, integers, you will send 12 of them. You will send these values. So now I claim that even if one of these values gets scrambled, you will be able to recover the original Bs perfectly. So yes. that means the sender always sends some redundant. Uh, yes, but notice <coughs> we allow one error, and uh, um, the trivial way would be you send a message three times uh, and then do majority vote on Bs. Uh, but this is huge overhead. Here, the overhead will be 2 for 10. In practice, of course, the overhead is uh, uh, to, to send. Uh, uh, 200 symbols, uh, you send 256 values, uh, um, out of which uh, 28 uh, can be erroneous. Uh, Right? So the overhead 
is relatively small, even though you can afford a large number of errors, 28 errors, so more than 10% of the uh, symbols that you want to send, the overhead is relatively small, right? Allowing you, we will come back to this. So let's first do it for a simple case where you have 12 errors, sorry, 12 uh, values. What happens if one of them is wrong? You simply do the following. You eliminate first P of 1, right? And out of P of 2, P of 3, up to P of 12, you take uh, P of 2 up to P of uh, 11, right? So you take, so you eliminate one value, then you drop one of these, and then you construct a polynomial whose values at 2, 3, up to 12, uh, up to 11 are uh, precisely these numbers, uh, right? So assume uh, you received uh, B1, B2, up to B12, and for one i, you have that P i, sorry, that P at i is not equal to B of i. So B of i was wrongly received, it is not equal to the uh, value of your polynomial. <coughs> but notice, so first what you can do is, uh, yeah, I guess this is better uh, to do it this way. So um, you remove B1, and then you take B2, B3, up to B11, and remove also B12. Now here, there are 10 values. So there will be a unique polynomial with, oh my god, I'm totally, sorry, it's uh, way too early now, I'm confusing these Bs with these Bs. So uh, let me call these A's. Sorry about that, it's early in the day, and I have problems sleeping, so, okay. Uh, do you need, um, do you need n plus 1 values to n plus determine two. n plus 2? So yes. That's uniquely determine an n degree polynomial. Yes. Oh, okay, so for n degree polynomial, you need one more value, right? Yeah. So to uniquely determine this polynomial, you need uh, 10 values, yeah. right? So what you take, you drop the first received signal, symbol, then you form a polynomial whose values are from B2 to B3. So form, say, Q of X such that Q of 2 is equal to B2 up to Q of... Uh, uh, B11, so sorry, Q of 11 is equal to B11. So this is of degree 9, right? And then, once you form this polynomial, you simply check whether its value at... Uh, so now check if uh, uh, Q of 12 is equal to B12. If 
You see, because 10 numbers uniquely determine a polynomial, right? So if 10 numbers, right, match, then if the 12, the, if you take 10 numbers and if the, if the 11th number matches, then this polynomial must be equal to your polynomial because they agree on 10 points. However, if you take out, if you <coughs> leave the erroneous number here, when you make your polynomial, right, then the last value will not belong to the same polynomial, right? So here we use the fact that polynomial with 10 coefficients is uniquely determined by 10 values. So if you send 12 values and one of them is wrong, it means that uh, if you remove one of the correct values, you fit the polynomial, the erroneous value will stand out. It will not be on the same polynomial, right? Because the 10 correct values will determine <coughs> uniquely uh, uh, the right polynomial, but the last one, the last value will be out. So you can simply go from B1 to B12 until you find a subset of the values, 11 values that are correct, you can reconstruct the polynomial and its coefficients will be the symbols that you send. Right. So um, let's move to this board. Um, now, just a, a simple aside. Given the values, how do we construct polynomials that in given inputs has these values? This is called Lagrange interpolation polynomial. Simply, if you know that uh, P of uh, say ci is equal to bi, right? Uh, for i goes between 1 and uh, degree uh, or, um, okay, so uh, let's say here, given uh, n arguments, Uh, CIs and uh, N values uh, BIs, uh, the uh, P of uh, X such that P of uh, CI <coughs> equals BI is uh, uh, constructed as uh, P of X equals sum when I equals from 1 to N and then product when I uh, is not equal, when j is not equal to i of, um, oh, let me, uh, product when j is not equal to i of x minus CI and here CJ, sorry, and here product also when J is not equal to I of uh, uh, CI minus CJ and then this uh, uh, times uh, BI. Uh. 
So can you see why this polynomial has this property? Notice, if I hit with x, if x is equal to ci, what is the value of this quotient? It's 1 times bi, so clearly p of uh, this guy will be 1 times bi is bi. But all other summons, uh, when x is equal to uh, ci, uh, what happens to the value uh, if um, x is not equal to, uh, to ci, but is, uh, um, I mean, sorry, if x is equal to ci, then this product, uh, j equals, not equal to i, you get ci minus uh, uh, cj divided by product j is not equal to i, ci minus cj, and this is equal to 1, right? On the other hand, if you take a different sum, right, then you will have, so for x is equal to, say, ck that is not equal to ci, sorry, sorry, if the other summand will be product when uh, uh, j is not equal to k of uh, uh, c, uh, c i minus c k divided by um, product uh, CK minus CJ. What happens with this product? You have all the guys except that J is not equal to K. Uh, except when, uh, so this will be this guy. So this here will be. Uh, 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 it will be, sorry, I'm totally, uh, I should not be early in the morning. Uh, so uh, when I have a factor different than, so here I will have CK, uh, here I'll have J, so here it will be K not equal to J, but on top, of course, I will have uh, this value x uh, when k, when uh, um, uh, when, 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 uh, uh, k not equal to cj, right? Right, we have this. But now notice, uh, k not equal to j doesn't exclude. So when x is equal ci, when this ranges over all k not equal to j, it will hit at one point uh, ck, uh, right? So for uh, when I substitute here uh, uh, ci, so the only missing thing here, uh, so you have all the products of the form x minus c1 uh, all the way to x minus ck minus 1, x minus ck plus 1, x minus cn. But notice, among these guys uh, is uh, x minus ci, right? Because the only excluded term is uh, x minus ck. So somewhere here, c 
So when I substitute x equal to ci, this will become 0. So these polynomials have a feature that they are everywhere 0 except uh, when x equals to ci when they are equal to 1. So they look like this. This is uh, c1, c2, and so forth. Here it is uh, uh, ci. Uh, here is uh, ci minus 1. Here is ci plus 1 up to cn. So these polynomials pass through 0 in all of these points, except here, oops, except here when they achieve a value 1 and then become 0 again at all c's. Uh, right? Because this will be 0 whenever x is not equal to ci, right? Because when x is not ci, if it's some other cm, then j will eventually hit cm. This will become uh, 0, right? j will be equal to uh, this m. This becomes 0, and consequently, you get 0. On the other hand, when x hits uh, ci, then you get precisely what you have at the bottom. So you have 1 times bi. So clearly, this polynomial precisely has the right value because at i point, this factor is 1 times bi. You get precisely the right value uh, bi. Yeah? Here it's 1, right? So this is the plot of the polynomial p, j not equal to i, x minus uh, uh, c uh, j divided by product j not equal to i, <coughs> c i minus c j, right? This gives you 0 at all points except when you hit uh, uh, x equals to ci. Yeah? OK, did you get this? OK, so this is a simple way to construct interpolation polynomials. So, Sorry, so, so, yes. so how can we know that pci is equal to bi? How can we know? OK, so you are given all the c's and all the b's. And you want to construct a polynomial so that in given c's has precisely given value b. So how do you know the given c is? OK, so what you do here is, for example, if you are trying to rule out b1, you have received b2, b3, up to b11, OK? Uh, and B12. Here are uh, 10 values. And they are the values for, uh, supposed to be the values when inputs are equal to 3 up to 11. So uh, the values C's, right? Um, C's will be just integers between 2 and 11, and b's will be these values. Oh. So you have 10 values, 10 inputs, 10 values, and you simply check, you substitute 12 in this polynomial, you compute the value, and you check whether you get b12. If you get b12, it means that this is the correct polynomial, right? Because your assumption is that there can be at most one error, right? So only one of these can be wrong. So 10 of these will be exactly the same as the values of p. But two polynomials of degree 9 that have 10 equals values must be equal. 
So only P will have property that uh, when you evaluate it at 12, gives you value 12. So if your polynomial for these values, for input x equals to 12 produces b12, it means that's the correct one. Right? On the other hand, if b1 was correct, and say b, b2, uh, say b, uh, b12 was wrong, uh, then when you make this polynomial, b12 will not fit the value of the polynomial for input 12. Okay. So now, uh, of course, uh, at, uh, in practice, what is the problem with uh, this uh, uh, with this method as we have described it? Uh, the problem with this method is uh, two, two folds, right? First of all, if you substitute these guys. Uh, in a polynomial whose coefficients are, say, from 1 to 10, its polynomial of degree 9, the values will be gigantic. So you cannot really efficiently transport them, right? So somehow we have to prevent polynomials for taking up large values. That's one thing. The second thing is you don't send in batches of 10. You want to send in batches of 200 symbols. So to allow sufficient error robustness, you choose uh, your threshold of uh, how many you should be able to correct. You choose 28. Uh, now, why do we choose uh, uh, this number that is equal to this number plus twice this? Let's talk about that. Now, assume that uh, you want to send the 10 values again, uh, 10 numbers, but two can be wrong. Okay. How many values of the polynomial should we, do we need to send? Uh, well, let's think about that. So assume uh, you have B1 up to B12, and let's see whether sending an extra one is sufficient, right? So you form your polynomial P of x that is equal a1 plus a2x plus, plus, uh, um, plus a10x uh, to the 9. And you compute uh, what is uh, P of 1. Um, P of 2 up to P of 13, right? And you send them. And on the receiving end, you get these 13 values as received. The question is, can we recover uniquely the polynomial? Well, let's see. Uh, one might argue, uh, let us try to eliminate, uh, uh, say, B1 and B2 as potentially flawed. Then let's take B3 up to, uh, up to B, uh, uh, B12, and let's set aside B uh, 13. So here we have uh, 10 values. Uh, so it appears there will be a unique polynomial, right, that will contain these values. And then we can again just substitute the value 13 and check whether this is correct. But there is a problem with that. What do you think? What's a problem? You see, you don't know which two values are screwed. So assume that actually screwed values are B3 and B4. Now, just by bad luck, so when you form this polynomial, 
it won't be equal to P. Because, right, these two <coughs> values are wrong. But maybe you are just so unlucky, unlucky that the wrong polynomial at value 13 also has value B13. You see? <coughs> so it is not enough to increase just for one, but we have to always. So conclusion, and let's demonstrate that. So conclusion. Uh, if uh, you need uh, to send uh, n values, and uh, the channel can scramble up to e many values, uh, then uh, send uh, n plus two e values of a polynomial of degree n minus 1, right? Because you need to send n values. For this, to uniquely determine a polynomial, you need a polynomial of degree n minus 1. So this says, send not n plus e many values, but n plus 2 e many values. Let's now prove that, lo and behold, this is enough to uniquely determine your polynomial. Right? So, uh, so assume uh, that uh, you receive <coughs> Uh, values uh, uh, b1 up to bn, bn plus 1 up to bn plus e, all the way up to bn plus 2e. Now what we have to do any questions, please be, um, it's not that I have complete com corpus menti at this hour, but uh, I can always try. Please uh, stop me and ask questions. Uh, anything that uh, needs uh, cleaning up. Uh, don't be shy at all. Okay, so what we are going to search, we are going to uh, set aside E many values okay 